the core mortgage real estate business show brought to you by capital mortgage funding i'm your host harvey free we've got an awesome panel today of course always harry glands and lisa lawson from capital mortgage they're on good morning everybody hi lisa hi harvey and we got matt bush on what's happening matt bush hey Harry, how are we doing today Nope, can't hear you yet, Matt. We'll get you fired up here. As all you listening people out there know, we do a Zoom cast so that you can catch us later. We're going to record a Zoom cast for you with lots of good information here. And then also, of course, live here in the studio all day long, 248-539-9797. Matt Bush from Remax First, he's on. And Matt, how's that audio now? Come on loud and clear. All right, we're going to work on it. He's going to call in right now. There he is. He's going to call in and get that going. Well, Harry and Lisa, boy, have we been jammed at the office, Lisa. I know we were there late last night. We've got purchases and refinancing. Homeowners are everywhere. Everyone wants to get a piece of all this equity that's out there as soon as Matt's get fired up here. But Lisa, everyone buying houses, the amount of equity a family has now from purchasing a home in the last five or 10 years, is we've never seen this type of equity before. Give us a little bit of vibe on what's going on. Tell me a little bit about some of the new buyers you've been working with, Lisa. Right. Yeah, we got Matt Bush fired up now. Matt, there's a lot of raw profit out there. ROI, the return on investment. Boy, you can't miss lately here in the United States. You can almost buy anywhere. Yeah, and, and right now, this is probably the best time for someone who's lived, you know, maybe their late 20s to early 40s to sell that first home like Lisa's talking about and get into that, you know, next level home, that that family home, that maybe forever home, um, based on with both month supply and just sales price in general, you know, this is like a generational opportunity for families to level up. You know, you can put your family in a position now for maybe 20 to $50 more a month to be in a house two to three times the same size as yours based on the equity that you guys just talked about, um, the interest rates, you know, seven years ago versus today. And, you know, if you're trading up, those houses don't trade as fast or as quickly. So you can kind of take your time when you're buying a house that's at that 350 and above range right now, you know, those houses are taking four to five months. That's a lot closer to a seller's market to where, you know, you're as or a buyer's market rather where you're in charge as a buyer versus you're tripping over buyers when you're getting to that, that first time home buyer market. Yeah. Great Very point, people. Matt. You bring up a great point, Matt, because there are certain segments of the market that are unbelievably hot. There are certain segments that are a little bit uh, slower. We're in the ninth year of a seller's market. If you take a look at higher priced homes, as Matt indicated, they might not be going as fast. As a matter of fact, they are not going as fast. But when you're in the ninth year of a seller's market, you have to be prepared to make sure of, that you're giving the best offer. And we hear the term in real estate, Matt, highest and best. It's not always the highest and best. There are other terms that you need to do. Occupancy. Are you waiving some kind of contingency, which I'm not in favor of? What are you doing to make that offer appealing to the seller? And then also with rates being where they are, rates aren't going down to zero. If you heard our podcast this week, here it is, Harvey Freed. You see this? Can everybody yes, see sir. this on Zoom? Barely, you know what this yeah. is? This is the mass mailer everybody's getting now saying that what kind of equity they have in their home from companies mass mailing people looking like it's coming from their existing lender saying that they should go ahead and give them a call. Do not fall for these mass mailers. Here it is. Got one in my house yesterday. And on the same day, I had clients calling me and texting me and taking pictures of this letter. This is not from your lender. I assure you. Never heard of a lender on here. Yeah, so, I hear you bring up two we're a very, Yeah, we're in a very vulnerable point here. Rates are low. Equity is high. Home sales are in the ninth year. But people are getting taken advantage of. And that's the point I wanted to make. 
Harry, the other point you bring up actually is the timing. And, and it's so important, especially this time of year. We got Thanksgiving coming up, of course, in about four weeks. At the end of November, you got Christmas time. Timing's everything. A lot of the families, they have to sell their house, but then they have to buy a new one. So, Lisa, we see that often on the purchase agreements. Somebody might even take uh, an offer, accept the offer, but put a contingency saying that, hey, I'm accepting your offer, but I've got to go find another house in 30 days. And then I'll waive that contingency once I find a house. So a lot of that going on right now. Yeah, this year is like something like we've never seen before. I don't even know where the summer went, but here we are leading into winter already. And home business, uh, home purchases are just through the roof. Matt Bush, I know you're out there in the trenches. Thank you for doing that great video of our fine city in Detroit. You always give us a little taste. And of course, you were down at the Eastern Market checking out. There's some really great opportunities. I actually picked up, Matt, and you would love this. I picked up two purchases in the city of Detroit this week. And both houses were really redone. I mean, really nice looking houses. Some new areas, revitalized areas. One of the homes actually doesn't even have property taxes due on, for another couple of years. So there's great opportunities everywhere. Matt, what are you seeing in the city right now? Are prices continuously going up? Yeah, um, you know, two, three years ago, you're looking at fifty to sixty thousand dollars for an, a starter house. Now it's ninety to one hundred and twenty-five easily. Um, you know, people are finding out about these neighborhoods in Detroit. So you're getting multiple offer situations. You know, they're not under the radar. You know, areas. You know, I know. Uh, Harry likes to talk to you about Bagley and Fitzgerald. You know, these areas on the northwest side are especially hot, especially around the Avenue of Fashion. You know, Eastern Markets had some condos come up of late and they're building more condos. I mean, they're in the one, one and a half million dollar range down there. Wow. You know, these are some really expensive, nice places to live. Um, Detroit, you know, there, there's a lot of what's called the uh, neighborhood enterprise zones or NEZ is the rebate that you're talking about where the city right. kind of waives tax captures for a period of years. Um, and it's typically on um, higher end homes too, higher end homes, higher end condos. So, you know, if you've always thought about a condo, but you don't like the HOA, well, typically you're not paying any taxes. So essentially your HOA is your entire tax bill. You know, there's some buildings where you're paying $400 a year taxes on a $400,000 unit. So then you're, you know, paying your 500 bucks a month on your, on your HOA. And that's, you know, less than you would pay, you know, in a home out here in the suburbs for a condo in an uh tax bill. So, you know, there's a lot of benefits of moving into the city. Um, but, you know, also a lot of people are moving out of the city. They want more land. They want um, to kind of be a little bit spread out. You know, a lot of people are raising families. You know, the big influx of moving into the city happened about 12 years ago. So now those people that moved in for super cheap housing are looking for areas like Jefferson Chalmers, where you can mm -hmm. find a house on a double lot for 100, 150 North End, which is just north of Grand Boulevard, south of Boston Edison right there. The same thing. You can buy a house you know, three years ago, 40, 50,000, now 200,000. So these are areas where you have some space, you've seen major appreciation, but it's still close to all the things that people have grown accustomed to uh, downtown and, you know, throughout the city of Detroit. Median home prices up to 311,800, up 14.8%. Harry, we are nonstop busy. A lot of families, of course, taking advantage of not only using the equity in their house, but maybe taking advantage of these really low, all-time low interest rates. Of course, we're always able to lower your interest rate, but there's other things that also happen. We're able to remove the mortgage insurance, the private mortgage insurance. We're able to consolidate some debts sometimes. And more importantly, as homes appreciate, property taxes go up. And of course, a little reminder, coming up soon, December 1st will be your winter property tax. And a lot of families out there might just want to go ahead and reset up their escrow account, take a look at refinancing, reducing the term. And yes, for any family out there who just bought a house and you just closed, those homes will be reassessed next year. Lisa, your house will go up in value. Well, so will your property taxes. Tell everyone out there a little bit about that. Obviously, if the property transfers happen, that means next year that you're asking your 
All right, hey, we got to talk about at least we got to talk about all these first time home buyers too and educating them. We came up against our first break. Keep it here on 97 on the ticket. We're going to take some calls this morning. 248 539 9797. Be right back. Hi, Harry Glantz and Dan Burke from Capital Mortgage Funding. Over 30 years in the mortgage banking industry, hundreds of thousands of families serve. Let us serve you. Capital Mortgage Funding, 1 800 low rate, the best mortgage banker.
<clears throat> All righty, welcome back to the show. 916, if you're just joining us, it's going to be okay outside today. It's a standard fall day out there. I don't know. They call this fall, so we get a little rain, a little cool weather, but go out and enjoy. We got football season, so keep it here on 97 One The Ticket. We got sports all day long. Again, we got Pat Caputo coming up with us next. We are sponsored by Capital Mortgage Funding and powered by Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, NMLS 2289, equal housing lender. When you want to be educated on your home purchase, be sure to call Capital Mortgage Funding. That's a fact, Jack. Lisa, I had a couple families say, wait a minute, you got to call Harvey. And sure enough, when I finally was talking to these clients this week, they needed some help. Um, we're, we're really telling people in this business, Matt Bush, purchases galore. Everyone wants to buy a house. But truly, truly, as I speak to more and more buyers, they want the knowledge. They don't have the confidence. They don't even know their next step. And I actually had a couple clients on who already had signed purchase agreements. They didn't know the next step. And it was rather interesting. Don't deal with strangers. Mr. Glanz brought it up just a little bit ago. You're starting to get scams. I know two, four, and seven, all our television stations covered it all week long. Our phones are getting, uh, our cell phones, we're getting calls from strangers. They're disguising numbers. There's the IRS, Social Security, the car warranty company and Visa is not calling you on the phone, folks. Warn your kids, warn your grandparents, warn your parents, definitely get people involved. Matt Bush, there's too many scammers out there, but the people that aren't scamming have these great opportunities, as Lisa was talking about. What a great opportunity to buy a house instead of renting right now, but you just need a little bit of confidence behind you. Yeah. And, you know, that's really comes from, you know, talking to professionals too to kind of put you in that place, you know, to set those right expectations. You know, Lisa was talking about property taxes. That's like the hidden cost that nobody ever finds out about until the second year of owning a home is they get that reassessment bill and says, hey, your mortgage is now a hundred dollars more. And, you know, for somebody that bought a house at the top of their pre-approval budget, that could be the difference of, Hey, I'm living comfortably versus, oh, where am I going to get this extra 100, 200 bucks a month? So you really want to be smart. You want to trust people, sit down, you know, 70% of people who, you know, use a realtor, use the first one they pick. So anytime I talk to somebody uh, who wants me to list or help them buy a house, I say, talk to one more person, at least get their opinion. You know, this is really a business of who do you want to hang out with? Who do you want to trust? Who do you feel more comfortable with? Because it's going to be a long process, you know. On, on the good side, you're going to be with me almost every day for the next 45 to 60 days. And, you know, if it's tricky, this could be a six to 12 month relationship. So, you know, I, my rule is, and Lisa passes this rule every time I tell her, call your realtor, your lender after when you would expect them to answer the phone, call them at dinner time, call them afterwards. And the person that calls you back right there wants to work for you and will, and you can see that they're attentive, that they're going to get back to you when you don't expect them to. So that's the test that I tell anybody who's thinking about buying, selling, or re refinancing is call your lender at seven o'clock in the morning at seven o'clock at night. And they're going to get back to you if they're legitimate. I, I've talked to Lisa walking out and locking the building at like nine 15 at night sometimes. Um, but you know, those are what a real estate professional <coughs> market like this, whether it's a buyer's market or a seller's market, we have to be on for our clients. It's not like we just have one person that we have to see. We've got a a team of clients that demand our attention. You know, this is the largest financial decision they've probably made to that time frame. Mm -hmm. So they deserve our they they can deserve or they deserve our undivided attention, even when we're trying to, you know, be with our families or have dinner. They still need us. Yeah, Lisa. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody knows I work from home and I feel that's just me. Harvey and I walked out of the building. I think I was that far before you, but there's only Lisa, that's a great point. That's a great, great point. You know, Lisa, I came into a couple things this week and you're really good with this kind of stuff. And sometimes you don't need both borrowers on the loan. Um, I just ran into a situation where I actually removed one of the borrowers off the loan. Again, the, the, I won't say husband or the wife, one of the parties did qualify on their own. They had a higher credit score and that way it kept the payment. Again, your credit score is a direct indication of what type of interest rate you're going to get. And then also if you're putting minimal down and most of our first time home buyers are three, 5%, 10% down, that PMI can get expensive if your credit scores are under 700. Definitely call Capital Mortgage Funding ahead of time. We'll try to get those credit scores up. And more importantly, save money as you're going to be purchasing a house. Again, it's all about knowledge. And Harry, 
we've got Skype, we've got FaceTime, we've got Zoom. We, we'll we'll meet you still. We can meet for a cup of coffee anywhere. Sitting down with people and really going over the all the details is a lot of fun, and it gives the buyers that confidence. What you're really talking about are relationships, okay? When you have a relationship with somebody and you know somebody, they're going to take care of you. When you get mass mailers or you want to go on the internet or you see somebody that tells somebody's brother, sister's mother's uncle that they're going to give you two and a half on a 30-year fixed, well, you know that there are points and costs involved in that. So the other day, sure enough, longtime client told me they're getting two and a half on a 30-year fix. I said, well, how much are you paying? They told me $10,000. And I said, you want to pay $10,000 up front for the privilege of, pay- of saving $150 a month? Your payback figure is over seven years. I mean, the current value of that $10,000 to you is worth more than saving it over seven year period of time. I mean, that is absolutely insane. That's like me giving, Har- that's like Harvey giving me $10,000 lump sum and every month I hand him back $150. Pretty good deal for me, not such a good deal for Harvey. So why would you do that, okay? So guess what? If you wanna go to those people, it's the wrong move. It's only about the relationship. It's only about who you trust. It's only about getting the proper information, disseminating accurate versus inaccurate information and educating people. And uh, I just, I really believe in relationships and I really believe in taking care of people. And that's what we try to do each and every single day. Well, to pile in on that, there's no doubt homeowners who sold in the third quarter, the numbers came in, they owned their house for an average of 8.3 years. So again, if you're looking at your payback is six, seven, eight years, you might not even keep that particular mortgage. So the math doesn't lie. And Harry, if I'd rather have the $10,000 instead of forking it over, I might, my stockbroker would rather have it. My financial planners would rather have it. That money can always work for me. I always have it. Once you turn it over, now you're chasing money. This is a home purchase. How did chasing money and your finances get all tangled up in this? When you want to buy a house, you want to get the best possible savings on it, something that's affordable for you. There's so many other factors. And as Mr. Glanz just said, there's no doubt, get with someone you trust. It's all about the relationship. Hey, we're going to take your calls here all morning long, 248-539-9797. Let's bring Matt Bush back into the conversation. Remax first. Matt, well, what a year for, well, the last five or nine years for real estate agents. Matt, you've been at it, rocking it every day. Tell us a little bit about some of the most recent buyers that you had and some of the experiences you had. I think it's nice for some of the first time buyers out there to just to hear a little bit more about it. Yeah. So, you know, we kind of touched on it earlier, but right now is really heavy with possession after the close. Pretty much every deal that I've done in the last mm. uh, six months or so, you know, the sellers are staying after close, which is really tricky now. You know, Lisa also talks about you with the holidays coming up. So if you close in 45 days, that's smack dab the middle of December. What are you going to do for, you know, Christmas, New Year's, Hanukkah, whatever. So you've really got to plan it around. So I would consider, you know, whatever you're doing, if you're selling, just expect possession after the close. I have, I'm picking up keys on Monday. I picked up keys last Sunday between buyers. Um, you know, your real estate agent, you know, I'm always holding money from the seller but uh, after close. So that way we know that you know, gives them an incentive to get out faster. So we're writing our PAs, our purchase agreements that, you know, we're going to hold two, three, five thousand dollars $5,000, depending on the price of the house until the seller leaves. So they'll get their, you know, their big money, but we're going to hold money because, you know, what if a window breaks? What if they move out and the, and the movers, you know, break something, miss something? What if they take something they shouldn't take? You know, there's all these, these are the backside negotiations that nobody really ever talks about. Occupancy after closing, if, if you're a first time home buyer, you probably have a lease or you live with family or friends, you can afford to stay there maybe another three to four weeks. You know, if you live with your mom or dad, you know, they're not shoehorning you out yet unless you've been through their fridge over the right. last nine months. Right. And so you can afford to give the seller, you know, 30, 60, 90 days of occupancy. That makes your offer stand out above other offers because you're not in a, a giant, you know, need to move. And then the sellers say, Oh, I get 60 days. So I'm not pressured into finding a house in this crazy housing market. I can take my time, make sure the house is good for my family and myself. So there's a lot of, you know, first time home buyers, you know, you've got to find somebody who works with you guys. You need, you know, white glove treatment. A first time home buyer needs, you know, more time, more affection, more nurturing. They need someone who's going to answer their calls, text all time of day. And that's kind of 
why I keep my client list artificially low, you know, never more than three or four clients to where you get a client who needs something at nine o'clock or they have a question, I can answer it and give them the answer that they need as quickly as possible. All right, it's 926, the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show. When we come back, 248-539-9797. If you want to buy a house or sell a house, give us a call. We'll show you how to do it the right way. Hi, Harry Glanz and Dan Burke from Capital Mortgage Funding. Over 30 years in the mortgage banking industry, hundreds of thousands of families served. Let us serve you. Capital Mortgage Funding, 1-800-LOW-RATE, the best mortgage banker.
Welcome back to the show, 931, October 24th, 2020. Yeah, you know what's going to happen on December 31st? This year is going to end. Then what? Then what are we going to do, Matt Bush? Well, we'll tell gonna, them all about that. You know what we're going to do? We're going to sell some houses. We're going to sell a lot of houses in 2021. you got to tune to the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show brought to you by Capital Mortgage Funding. Call us at Capital 1 800 Low Rate, the best mortgage banker. Listen, not only buying houses, refinancing the home you just bought, learn more, deal with the real individuals. We were talking about a lot of scammers out there. Don't deal with the strangers. Uh, coming up now, we got Becky Yaley coming up here in a little bit as we continue the conversation about purchasing and refinancing your home. You know, Becky, 12% of the uh, mortgages out there on the purchase side last month were done FHA. FHA is still a great loan. You've got USDA, VA, FHA. Becky, there's a lot to know. Yeah, I feel like FHA has gotten a little bit of a bad rap. People think, oh my gosh, it's an FHA loan. I'm going to have to totally remodel my house in order to accept this financing. And it's really not like that. I mean, FHA, they're going to cite health and safety concerns, chipping paint. Is there a hand railing? They don't want you to tumble down the stairs. I mean, these are kind of common sense things that you should have on your house anyway, right? So there's nothing wrong with FHA money. Money is money. And if that's going to get you into a house, it's a great vehicle because it also allows you to buy more home because FHA is going to allow you to extend your debt ratio. Well, what does that mean? That means that you can have more debt going out than coming in with an FHA financing and the rates are comparable. Um, so as far as sellers, you know, kind of being hindering towards FHA transactions, um, it's it's not really true anymore because you can have a conventional appraisal. So I want you to fix so it. So it's not really going to be really just an FHA appraiser, appraiser that might go out there and, 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 and sell it for something that needs to be modified. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. $131,000 mortgage limit. FHA loans aren't for like uh, inexpensive housing at all. I mean, it's for anybody. Yeah who's looking, there's reasons why one mortgage might fit your needs over someone else. Matt Bush, you talked about it a little bit. We talk about some people coming back to the city. Well, there's a little of everything. Some people are moving out. They want some more land. They want to stretch their legs a little bit. USDA loans allow zero down. But whatever your choice is, there's opportunities out there. And Matt, when you're sitting with these families, like we talked about earlier, you got property taxes could change. There's some things in the city of Detroit or anywhere that buyers really need to know. Uh, you talk about homes appreciating it, gangbuster. You know that means your property taxes are going to go up. Matt, just tell us again. Give us a little vibe on some of the buyers you're working with right now, and uh, what you see coming up in 2021 on the buy side. Yeah, so we're starting to see homes kind of begin to slip on the higher end as far as value. Um, it's not the only. Uh, it's not the only place where we can really get into extra points. So. Um, what I would want to do is just kind of sit down with every buyer, find out their specific need and see how we can help. You know, real estate's not a monolith. That's my, that's my, my theory. All right. Let's go to this call out here. We got Michael out in Brighton. Good morning, Michael. Thanks for calling into the show. You got a quick question. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. All right. Wow. And um, I've been looking around a bit more. We're supposed to close October 30th. My question is, uh, I thought I'd seen some 10-year notes. Rates were as low as 2.15. And I asked my loan officer about this. They told me they don't lower prices or lower the interest rate if the interest rate does indeed go lower. Is that uh, common? Or because I know some companies, if they lock in a rate, Hi, it's Harry. How are you this morning? <laughs> can you hear Harry, me? You got that? Yeah, we can hear you, Harry. Go ahead. Oh, good. Well, I want to address this. First of all, if you're getting 2.375 on a 10-year fixed rate, that's a phenomenal rate. That's number one. Number two, my question is, how much are you paying? Are you paying any points, origination fees? What are you paying for that rate? And number three, uh, there, there's no such thing as a 2.1 10-year rate without paying a lot of money for it. So you have to answer those three questions for me. Oh, shoot. We I end up losing them, too. And Michael just dropped his call, too. So we're going to call him back. You know what? We'll move yeah. on to a new buyer. We've got, hey, maybe we scared him off on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one wants to fess up on how much they're paying for that super low rate. Call right. us back, Michael. We'll definitely follow up with you. Let's move off to Chuck and Graham Blank. Good morning, Chuck. Thanks for joining our show. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, guys. How you doing? Real good. Thanks for the call. Go ahead, Chuck. All right. I kind of got, got a dilemma here. Um, I just... 
purchased a large piece of property, but now I want to, I got a chance to buy an apartment complex. And the question is if I you call it ready cash that I, I keep on, I call ready cash for all my other homes and repairs and everything. It's gonna drain everything I have. I want to know if I should do that or use my piece of property I just bought as collateral. Um, you got. You might have some. Hey, Chuck, how much is this uh, apartment complex going to be? What's the cost on it? Uh, a million to how, a million two hundred fifty thousand. Okay, a million two five. And then you've got how many units there? Uh, Twenty-seven. Man, is, is it is it fully occupied? What's the ROI on this building? Do you have to? Yeah. Is it, it, Fully occupied. Um, I have. A, I own a complete city block. Well, I get twenty five thousand dollars income a month from. Okay, so I think the answer on my side as a realtor is what whatever the investment is going to yield a better return. So if you're going to get more money out of this uh, apartment building, I'm, I'm imagining you're going to have an inspector go high, low and comb that thing to make sure there aren't any major issues. But if you can burn slowly enough on the apartment building at right now, it might be easier to just go with that and maybe liquidate some of the, the single families you have, because, you know, now you're with, you know, one roof is simple, is, instead of 24 roofs, you know, one big boiler instead of 24. So, that could be, you know, a, a way to consolidate, and then you could have more liquid on the backside after you move some of those investment properties, and not have to give up um, your your big piece of land. I don't know what what kind of do we do any land um, collateral? It's hard, it's hard to get money out of that. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Chuck, real quick. Uh, Chuck, could you have uh, opportunities, you have relationships with a bank where you're able to borrow against that vacant land? Because that's a tough thing to loan against. Yeah, they 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 would they would. Take the, the, the vacant land as, as collateral going down as the payment for the, uh, the for apartment complex. Well, Chuck, I like this. I like, number one, that you have a rainy day fund that you keep cash available for the repairs on the homes. I like that. Keep that going. Don't liquidate that. That's number one. Number two is if you can get some equity out of the vacant land and use that as collateral on number three, the apartment complex, it's fully you're fully leased. You've got positive cash flow. And it sounds like those properties are going to that, you know, it's always going to be fully leased and it's going to appreciate in value. I, I think you've got the potential right there for a, a very solid portfolio, but always keep your rainy day cash fund. Don't liquidate your rainy day cash fund. Okay. Hey, Chuck, we'll follow up with you. We're excited to hear a little bit more about it. And a lot of families out there going ahead and taking advantage of these low, low interest rates and opportunities out there. Matt, boy, I've come across a lot of people looking to buy apartment buildings, you know, four to 10, 20 units. These are great money makers. Again, interest rates at all time lows. Now, when you go over four units, you're looking at a commercial loan. You're not going to use us. But if you're interested in that, definitely call Capital Mortgage Funding. We'll set you up with the right people. Or if we could do the loan for you, we'll definitely give you some great information out there. Mortgage rates, again, keeping this business going in the right direction. We haven't seen this in the luxury home market. It's up 41%. It's the biggest year in the luxury home market since 2013, when really all of this started about seven years ago. Low rates make it affordable. And you're seeing family buying up north, anywhere, like uh, the other caller had called in, looking at buying properties all over the place, including across the country, the Hamptons. Uh, people like to buy in Miami, Aspen. People want to get out and stretch their legs. They want to live in a place where they can bike, hike, climb mountains, do it all. So really exciting stuff here is these mortgage interest rates stay really low. Again, we want to dive into a little bit of a cash out refinance opportunity out there. So many families taking advantage of these low interest rates. Be sure to call Capital Mortgage Funding. Go ahead and take a little bit of the equity out if you need to. We do the math for you. We make it really easy. A lot of families over the last, again, have some trouble through the pandemic. Some families have done quite well. But again, call the professionals and find out before you get trapped into something. We run those amortization charts all the time. And again, that'll give us a lot of answers on how you can save money. All righty. This show's flying by today, Jim. Geez, almighty. 941 here. Keep it on 97. One the ticket. When we come back, your phone calls, 248-539-9797. Hi, Harry Glantz and Danberg from Capital Mortgage Funding. Over 30 years in the mortgage banking industry, hundreds of thousands of families served. Let us serve you. 
Capital Mortgage Funding, 1-800-LOW-RATE, the best mortgage banker. All right, welcome back to the show. Keep it here on 97 One The Ticket. Following us, of course, Pat Caputo, social commentary, sports, nonstop here on 97. We got the Michigan football game coming up too, about six o'clock, 6 30, little pregame. Uh, Brandy with Dan Deerdorf, of course. It's going to be awesome. Michigan football, college football back. We got Michigan, uh, Minnesota, and I think Michigan State this afternoon with Rutgers. Is that when they kick it off? All right, so good stuff here. Keep it on 97 One The Ticket, always, all your sports. And nonstop good stuff here. We, we wrap up the mortgage show in about 15 minutes. We'll go to a caller here, 248-539-9797. We got Pat on the line from Royal Low. Good morning, Pat. Hey, Real good. Go ahead with the question. Hey, I've been buying and rehabbing my rental home for about two years. And I'm just nine homes of my own that are all paid for and all rented. And I'm looking to consolidate yeah you can do that definitely hey guys we always cringe a little bit at that now you can always take equity out of your rental home yeah it's not as much if it was your primary residence it's a lot of work 
do you have any relationships yet with mm, interesting <clears throat> How much money do you are you looking to pull out of these homes in general? The total amount, what would you be looking at? Are any of the homes worth two fifty, three hundred? Are all the homes a hundred, a hundred and twenty? What's the number of the value of most of these homes? Oh. No, that's not a problem at all. Detroit's great. Hey, Lise, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. You can always cash into equity, whether it's a primary residence, a secondary home, or an investment property. So I would say, you know, give us a shout. Let us see how we can help you. But that's definitely not an issue for anybody here. Yeah, maybe take the two of more expensive ones. Uh, Becky, yeah. advice, same thing. Take the more expensive uh, homes, and maybe we could work with those two. Because what are we looking to cash out an investment lease, uh, a rental home? Is it 65, 70%? 70. 75. 70 to 75. Okay, 75. so again, and uh, maybe you just would be able to do the two homes and then set yourself up. You'd still own all the other seven homes free and clear. Yeah, that's a great idea. We're going to follow up. We're going to call you. We're going to call, call us. <laughs> yeah, we'll get you hooked up. Capital Mortgage Funding, 1-800 low rate always. Thanks, Pat. We will follow up with you and make you a great offer. That's for sure. Thank you. Well, here's the, here's the thing is um, most, some lenders right now, they're not doing investment property refinances. You know, so yeah. a lot of my real estate colleagues and they're reaching out because we're one of the few that actually are still able to refinance the investment property. So we'll for sure reach out, you know, Harvey can reach out or Lisa reach out um, to the caller yeah. after the show. And um, people are taking advantage of it, brings up the topic of the lower rates, right? And cash out transactions and tap into the equity, right? Investors are using the properties that they already have to tap into the equity of Toronto. And what he's describing is buying more property. They're making their money work for them in the real estate market. And that's smart, right? You can, you know, they're, they have a system in place. And as long as it makes sense, you can kind of just keep, you don't have to liquid, you know, you're not using your liquid funds. You're look, you're using your funds that are already in the real estate market. So what he's saying is actually, is it, I mean, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, and they're taking advantage of the fact that because interest rates are at all time lows, they're also at all time lows for investment properties. But here's the thing, you can get real crazy real quick when you're talking about buying points for rate, right? So there's a lot of noise and all oh, rates are at 2.25 and these like fallacy rates and it's not real. You're paying money for that rate. So you need to make sure that if you are willing to pay points for a lower rate, that it makes sense because you can get real stupid real quick and you might not make your money back on that kind of investment because like Harvey mentioned earlier in the show, once you put that money into that mortgage, it's there. You're not going to you know, you got to figure out, are you going to recoup it? Are you going to be saving money? And you got to make sure that it makes sense. Example, real quick. Last night, gentleman called me. There's several other mortgage, you know, he's like shopping around and he was like, well, I got offered X rate. And then I said, okay, well, let's do the math because I know right now that rate, you're paying a big chunk of money up front for that rate. Okay. He had a higher rate closer to 5%. We're talking about putting to a 20 year. I love putting people on 20 years because it makes sense, right? Sometimes if you can cut the term, save the money. Yes. This gentleman, even paying the points, he was still going to save $70,000 over the life of the loan. So we did the math and it actually made sense in his particular situation because he was cutting the term. <coughs> down. Someone's going to pay $6,000 to go from a 30 to a 30. No, it doesn't make sense to save $30 a month. Who cares? Like it's, it's not, you're not going to get that money back. So it's just about sitting down, calling the professionals, calling us, and, and we'll make sure that we're putting you in the right position. And we'll be honest. Got to stay organized. Uh, learn a little, save a lot. I got a new model out there. You like that one, guys? Learn a little, save That's a lot a of money. That's a good one. Don't, don't be stupid with your money. Don't be stressed out about it. Just get a little bit of knowledge behind you. Again, we always talk about they don't teach these things in schools. Uh, you know, accounting, maybe they teach an accounting class in school, financial planning, credit, purchasing of a house. How to, how to exist in this crazy world we live in, pay your bills, raise a family, save for college. There's a lot to know. And again, let's go back to that theme. Learn a little, save a lot. 248-539-9797. We're wrapping up here in about another five or 10 minutes. Get your calls in or be sure to call us at Capital Mortgage Funding if you want to save money. Get the best refinancing terms. 1-800-LOW-RATE, the best mortgage banker. We don't deal with these strangers out there. The phones are still ringing off the hook. We get them throughout the week for families that we're dealing with out-of-state lenders, uh, complete strangers. They're, they're finding out that they're taking hostage money up front. They're being lied to. They're mm. being deceived. Yeah. Deceitful. That's a good point. So yeah. be careful. The scammers are out just like always. 
248-539-9797. Hey, guys, just because we got about another seven or eight minutes here, go ahead with some of your final thoughts on what you guys got going coming up. Uh, what you said, Harvey, real quick, um, hostage money. Um, yes. Someone asked me, what do we, I owe you um, to move forward? What do I owe you for you to run a scenario? The answer is nothing. We do not take hostage money at Capital Mortgage Funding. You owe us very little to run. Nothing, actually. You don't. You owe me nothing for me to run scenarios, fix your credit, because that is just what our job is. We are here to help you. We're going to treat you like family. So if someone is not willing to send you a quote until you give them a credit card number, run for the hills and find someone else that's willing to work for you and be honest because if you have to pay to play up front they're not for you yeah exactly lisa yeah i can't reiterate that enough pay to play works on some levels but not when you're trying to get the best deal for you and your family um whether we're doing cash out or using a purchase anybody should be able to give you estimates for free you provide the information you know, obviously it's based on a credit score. We're going to want to pull your credit, but we're going to provide scenarios for you till we're blue in the face until you tell us to stop. And, he, and that is our job. That's what we're here to do. People ask us all the time, how do we get paid? We get paid at the end. After, if you close, we get paid. That's also in our best interest to make sure that you close. Um, you know, it's nothing that you pay us up front, you know, but we're here to work for you. Make sure that you're getting exactly what you want in the product that fits your needs or that your family's needs. And I think that's super important that people understand that. No doubt. Uncle Harry, there's no doubt there's a lot of things that people are unknown. We don't know what's going on with this virus. We just don't. We don't know when the uh, the vaccine's going to be available. We don't know who the president of the United States is going to be in, in three or four, in three weeks. So there's a lot of unknowns out there. Father Harry, Uncle Harry, uh, also the PPE money. Are people going to have to pay this back? Is it a tax deduction? A lot of unknowns out there. Well, relationships are the key. And what we do know is that if you have a, a team behind you and you have a tr and have trusted advisors on your side, you can't go wrong. You have to sit down and talk to people that you trust that have solid reputations that have been in business for a very long time. Things I've learned over 31 years are you have to have solid relationships. And if somebody tells you something that is too good to be true, and then they're asking you to write a check up front chances are it's too good to be true. So we said that all the time. I like uh, coining the phrase hostage deposit money. We've been talking about it for a very long time. Um, you can't do that. Also, you go to somebody that's recommended by somebody else. Nothing wrong with shopping around, but start with the people that you know versus people you don't know. Okay. And then compare the two and then see if they're asking you to write checks or give credit cards up front. That's, you know, my take for today is, Wherever we are in this world with this virus, with the presidential election, stick with the people close to you and the people that you trust. Matt Bush, it's a lot of fun to buy a house. Tell us more about it. Yeah, so I'm just going to I want to put a call out to all the mothers-in-law, fathers-in-law, soon-to-be grandparents, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. If you own a house currently or if your, your son or daughter-in-law own a home, but you want their family to start growing, now is the best time for them to sell that house they're currently in and level up to a full-time you know, family-sized house. So call me, I'll do a free market analysis, talk about how long it'll take to sell the house, how much they can expect, what the, their bottom line is gonna be, and then I'm gonna talk to Lisa or Becky or Harvey or Harry and how we can roll that money into a bigger house for the grandkids, for the larger family, for whatever circumstance you might need, the full team effort here when you work with myself, with Lisa, with Becky, we've been doing this. I don't know. Lisa and I have three deals going right now. So we're in constant communication. But if you have an entry level house right now, it's the best time to sell it in the last generation. Time you heard it first. There it is. The role. King, Matt Bush. All right. Hey, guys, that's it for the show. Like I said, this one flew by today. Well, we've got football season here. So keep it on 97 on the ticket. Be sure to call Capital Mortgage Funding all week long. 1-800-LOW-RATE, the best mortgage banker, the best Matt Bush. Always love having you on. Always fun to buy real estate. Want to thank all the callers for calling in this morning, too. Keep it here. We got Pat Caputo coming up with sports, social commentary. See you next Saturday.